Hello everybody, uh, this is Richard with Janus Motorcycles. Today uh, we wanted to do a video and talk a little bit about the rear suspension on the new Halcyon 450. The suspension on the 450 is probably one of the main differences between the 450 and the 250 Halcyon if you set aside the larger engine and overall stronger frame, etc. But the, really the, the, the main difference if you were just to look at the frame and chassis of the, of the 450 is the fact that it does have rear suspension. Suspension in general, um, there are two main uh, roles that suspension plays um, in a vehicle. Uh, the earliest suspension designs, which started all the way back in the Renaissance with carriages, royal carriages, the very finest uh, the, the most state-of-the-art uh, vehicles of their time were literally suspended. So when we say suspension, they were actually suspended on leather straps. And so they were, we know that because they described these early carriages and they would sway back and forth as they, were, as they moved along. Um, and the primary role of that suspension was to isolate the rider or occupant of the carriage from the jolts and bumps of the road. And it did so in an imperfect way because it was just the, the kind of swaying would, would, would uh, limit the amount of jolting you'd have in a carriage. And by the 18th century, they had moved to steel springs. Now they were very rudimentary steel springs, but they were still just basically performing this role of isolating the occupant from the road, which worked fine because up until the industrial revolution, the top speed of a human being was basically the speed of a horse. <laughs> and so it didn't really matter. Uh, it did everything that you needed it for it to do. However, with the advent of the Industrial Revolution, automobiles, early motorcycles, etc., there was a new need on the part of suspension to not only you know, prevent the bumps of the road from disturbing the occupant of the vehicle, but to improve the road holding ability of the vehicle. So by road holding, we mean the ability of the tire or the wheel, whatever it was at the time, to stay in contact with the road. And that's important because as these new vehicles started going faster and faster and gaining more power, they needed to, if they didn't maintain contact, they would skid, slide, and you could have accidents and you couldn't go very fast. So that was the those are still, to this day, the primary roles of suspension. However, now we need to make both those happen at the same time. Um, so uh, when, we went, when we decided to go with the rear suspension on the 450, the reason we decided to do that was that on the Halcyon 250, as many of our owners, as all of our 250 owners, Halcyon owners will tell you, you know, it does sound terrifying to have a motorcycle that doesn't have rear suspension. However, the Halcyon 250 is so light, it's relatively low powered and low speed. And it's just like those early motorcycles that did not actually, one of the reasons that they didn't have suspension is that it really wasn't necessary. Uh, the, uh, the advent of suspension, I mean, early in the 19 teens, early motorcycles had rear suspension, but it never really took off because it was so expensive and because there wasn't as much of a need for there to be rear suspension. So. Um, take a little bit of a, of a, a history lesson in, in, uh, in rear suspension. We can look back to those early bikes and the first motorcycles really were nothing more than a bicycle frame. So if you look at back at the, the teens, even up to the twenties, they would essentially be a bicycle frame with an engine stuck wherever it would fit, which just happened to be where it still is in the, the bottom of the diamond frame. And that, that worked well with a rigid rear end, as I say, until the speed started to increase and the, and the ability to take a corner quickly needed to be improved. And at that point, it really wasn't the average motorcycle that gained rear suspension, it was the kind of the high-end bikes. So the two brands that first introduced rear suspension as we know it today, or at least we can trace back to, were Vincent Motorcycles um, and Bruff Superior. Uh, Vincent introduced a uh, rear suspension design, which he called, it was Phil Vincent of Vincent, 
patented it in 1928, and it was a system that, uh, as you'll notice, looks very much like this. There's a, a fully triangulated uh, swing arm that pivoted off the back of the bike, and it used a pair of suspension units, which we'll get into in a bit, just like we do. Bruff Superior went with a, a different uh, design that worked better with the old bicycle type frames that they were using. But by the late 30s, uh, Veliset Motorcycle, another English brand, got the idea of using hydraulic, um, they called them oleo struts, which they had, they literally had an aircraft manufacturer which had just introduced this idea for landing gear on airplanes on their rear suspension bikes. And those, that rear suspension basically was the, it's, if you look at it today on their Mark 8 uh, KTT, it looks exactly like modern paired suspension units like you see on the Phoenix and Griffin 250 models or a Triumph or any kind of traditional bike. And that was extremely successful. Uh, it was more successful than the plunger type suspension that um, was a different um, kind of precursor that Norton and BMW had been really uh, successful with at the TT, uh, Isle of Man Tourist Trophy. Um, but the, that once they introduced that, it really started to take off. And then in um, the 19, it, it was first used at the 1950 um, Isle of Man Tourist Trophy, Rex McCandless's featherbed frame, which we have a lot of, we have another video on that. If you uh, please check that out, if you wanna know more of the history of, of how that frame came to be and why it's called the featherbed. But that, that frame he used, uh, rear fork with two paired shock absorbers. And from then on, for the next 40 years, that basically dominated the motorcycle industry um, and is still being used on many bikes, including our soft tail 250 line. After that, uh, the industry gradually shifted because of the, mo the advent of motocross and off-road riding. Um, a guy named um, Lucien, Lucien Tilkins uh, in Belgium developed uh, the monoshock suspension, which he eventually sold to Yamaha, and Yamaha uh, introduced it on their YZ250 and just dominated motocross um, with that. Uh, and the main reason was that it provided incredible amount of suspension travel, so you could handle all these bumps and uh, um, the demanding racetracks of, of motocross. After Tilkins and Yamaha, everybody shifted to a monoshock linkage suspension. And so, uh, uh, briefly, what a linkage suspension does is probably, if you have another motorcycle, it might be what your bike uses. It likely is. Uh, it started off with motocross, but it's a way of gearing the rear suspension so that a single shock absorber and spring can be, uh, can, they can give it a progressive suspension and or spring and damping rates so you can control the ride a lot better. Almost all sport bikes, touring bikes for the last, since the 1980s, have used that. Everybody has their own version, um, and it's basically become the go-to for rear suspension. However, in recent years, uh, leading off-road bikes, oddly enough, are like KTM, are moving to a direct suspension. So what I mean by direct is just like this, where it's the shock is always connected from the rear suspension unit to the frame, just like on the 250 uh, soft tails, just like on the older bikes, partly because of advances in metallurgy and engineering and what a shock absorber can do. Um, it allows it to do that. Um, and was one more reason why we, when we first started looking at suspension, we looked at a, we want, well, I guess I'll say the reason we wanted to go with an alternative suspension to the paired, the paired spring strut, um, like we have on the 250 House, uh, Griffin and, and Phoenix, was that we really wanted to preserve the lines of the Halcyon 250. It's a, clean, uh, minimal, and traditional look. It does kind of look like a hardtail motorcycle, um, and it just looks really sharp. And we wanted to preserve that. We wanted to carry on the DNA of the 250 in the 450, um, and so we wanted to preserve that look. So we thought about doing a linkage system. However, um, once we started digging into the engineering of the linkage system and the rear suspension, um, using uh, some software from a leading um, alternative suspension guy named Tony Fole, uh, we discovered that you can't, there's a huge concentration of loads when you use a linkage system. And modern motocross and 
and motorcycle frames are designed for a linkage system and so they can um, accommodate that. However, we're using a modified version of the feather bed frame, uh, kind of a traditional frame that really isn't designed for that. It's designed for more like the paired shock absorber. And so it, we would have really had to redesign quite a bit and it wouldn't have looked as good. And the, and the complexity is really high and the maintenance on these, with all this really high tolerance machining that goes into it, needle bearings, um, all this stuff. And so we thought, well, what if we go, we started exploring it and, and kind of backwards, we ended up looking back at uh, Phil Vincent's design, which is literally, uh, what, 90, <laughs> over 90 years old at this point. Um, but it has a lot of advantages. Uh, the advantages for us are that we do preserve those clean lines. As you can see, even without saddlebags on it, clean lines, really reminiscent of the 250. We can get two shock absorbers which they did, one of their shock absorbers would have been the shock and the other, or the spring, and the other would have been a damper originally. Um, we just pair the two together. So we get the same benefit of a paired suspension. We aren't putting a lot of, the, one of the issues with a single monoshock is that you can put a lot of heat in there and it can wear it faster. Um, so this will not, won't be, won't suffer from that. Um, other other uh, benefits are that it just so happens that we have a wonderful mounting point already here in the frame where uh, this mount is for, um, I'm sorry, this mount is for the passenger pegs. This mount is the seat pivot point. So we already had a pivot point here. We can tie in the shock absorber and seat all into one point, and we don't have any concentration of loads. No more stress is going in here. It's a one-to-one -one relationship, basically, or a ratio, than it would be on a, a traditional paired suspension unit bike. So, um, what we, we were able to basically knock out about four different objectives, um, the clean lines, all that stuff, with this suspension design. And it's a tried and true design. It's been around for over 100 years. Um, and it's something that we can make here without a whole lot of machining and complicated uh, high tolerance work. So we're really pleased with it. And uh, the testing we've done, uh, which we're going on a year, almost would have been a February of this year that we started testing it, um, has proven that we have a progressively wound suspension unit, so we can we get our progressive suspension through the winding of the spring. We have a fully adjustable, uh, so this is not just a three-click um, adjustment, but fully threaded with lock nut preload adjustment. So you can, um, if you decide to, if you're a heavier rider or a lighter rider, you can uh, dial in this preload to ch to adjust for ride height. Um, and um, so far, this this has been everything that we had hoped for and more uh, because it, it just has, the, it really pairs what we were set out to do. The aesthetics, um, the history, and the performance really live up to our expectations. So we're really pleased with it. Um, and we look forward to, uh, if you have a chance, come on by and visit, uh, try one out. And you'll notice that this is a suspension system. It's everything, uh, the beauty of the Halcyon 250, but all the comfort and um, uh, performance that you would expect from a modern bike with this kind of weight. This bike weighs about 90 pounds more than the 250, twice as powerful, uh, quite a bit faster. So it, it, we knew from the beginning we really would have to have suspension on this bike and um, it's lived completely up to that. So uh, we're really proud of it and we look forward to uh, uh, getting everybody's thoughts on it. For a more in-depth look at the history and design of the 450 rear suspension, please check out our two-part blog post on the rear suspension design on our website. Thanks so much for watching this video. We hope to do more uh, on different, uh, maybe the front suspension, more aspects of the motorcycle in the coming weeks and months. Um, we, we will have more content. We're always putting out uh, more videos, blog posts. So if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all those. And um, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more.